What up, what up, what up, people, what up? It's me, L Teddy 27 back again, another review. This will be our review for Love and Hip Hop. No, shit, not Love and Hip Hop. Damn it. Our review for the haves and the have nots. Season 7, episode 3. Oh, why I wanted to say Love and Hip Hop? The haves and the have nots. Season 7, episode 3. Now, we start off where we left off last episode, y'all. So, Catherine is getting arrested. She goes through the whole, do you know who the hell I am? Spiel that all rich white people of privilege seem to have locked and loaded at any moment of peril. Do you know who I am? They cart her ass out of the goddamn house as she's passing the squad car where Wyatt is. Wyatt has the nerve. Wyatt says to her, I saved you tonight. I am God. I saved you tonight. Nope. Wyatt, listen, Wyatt, you did not save her, okay? What saved that whore? was Tyler Perry's ineptitude at writing, his stupidity. That is what saved Catherine Cryer, not you, Wyatt. Anyway, Wyatt starts calling himself God, and then he tells Hannah about the, um, the uh, plot that Jim had to um, kidnap Benny and keep Benny until Candace gave her the, gave him the money back. So Hannah is all in sorts at this point. Hannah calls Candace and tells her to go find Benny because Benny is in danger. Benny, you in danger, girl. You in danger, bitch. And Hannah is all up in sorts um, about that. Candace um, seems more concerned about Jim's well-being than Benny and what's going to go on with Benny. But we'll see how that uh, works out. Next, we got Jeffrey and David who arrive. And magically, through the magic of Tyler Perry and his level brand of fuckery, they managed to get behind the crime scene tape and allow it to go in an, into an open crime scene. Yeah, whatever. David finds out Jim has been taken to the hospital. Hannah asks him if he knows anything about the plot that Jim had to kidnap David. I mean, Benny. And David was like, really, girl, this is not the time or <laughs> place to be asking me all of this garbage. Child, you know Hannah. A mess. Hannah ain't trying to hit Hannah. All Hannah care about is Benny. Hannah seems to care a whole lot about that goddamn Benny. Then she do it by Candace, but whatever. At this point, the thing with Benny kind of seems a little incestuous. But whatever. Veronica, we then see, um, Veronica calls, what's the guy named Derek? Is that his name? Let me look at my old notes. I think his name is Derek. Y'all going to correct me if I'm wrong. I really think his name is Derek. Hold on. Um, I'm trying to look at my old... This is a mess. I should have had this guy's name already locked and loaded. Yes. Yes, it's Derek. Child. Anyway, I'm getting as bad as Really BTV with um not knowing names. Shouts out to my girl, Really BTV. Can I tell y'all how... Derek is a whole grown man ass snack, okay? Derek is oh not outside of the beijing. I would have been okay if he had the salt and pepper hair going on on his beard, cause it's a little too much beijing or just for men or whatever dye he's using on the beard. It's just a little too much. I mean, we know that you're a guy of a certain age, and you look damn good. You a whole ass grown man snacking meal. I mean, that body, that skin tone, that, ooh. Mm, child. Mm, that Derek, child, you know Tyler. Tyler don't fuck off when it comes to uh, picking the men's. 
which is why when I do my reviews for Greenleaf, I keep saying, who's doing the casting? Can y'all go hire Tyler Perry to do casting for Greenleaf and get us some more eye candy, some more male eye candy on Greenleaf? I'm just saying, hashtag IJS. Anyway, some skank named Gretchen, um, who Charles used to date um, some time ago, um, comes to see him, trying to get her box beat in by him. And, um, you know, they have this back and forth. She takes off her little clothes, have all the little um, lingerie, talk about, I broke up my, with my boyfriend to come over here. He say, when? Just now? A mess. Just a whole ass skank. Um, Landon then calls someone. He on the phone with somebody telling them to fix the situation with Candace. Because that's his only way to get back in good with um, Charles. So he thinks. So then the um, guy Scott, I think his name is. The guy who works for the Attorney General. He comes over. And Landon gets him to um, tell him why the Attorney General has such a hard on for Candace and what it is that, why he went so hard at trying to get Candace, um, blow up Candace's thing. And so he finds out that the guy, um, the Attorney General had money stolen from Candace when Candace was being the whole ass whore, when she was being the prostitute, the skank, the whore. She stole money from him. It was less than $2,000. It wasn't even that serious amount of money. But y'all, he all up in arms about it. And that's why he got such a hard on for Candace. Then dude with the rooster hair came in. Bad hair dude came in. Trying to steal in. The one who been trying to steal in his jobs. I don't know what they was talking about. It was just too much. It's too mage. Too mage. Too mage. Can y'all just fucking get it over with? Landon and um, hair guy. Whatever. Move it on. Mitch and Benny are at the script club. Not strip club, but script club. Um, Mitch, not Mitch, Benny left his phone in Mitch's car. Um, Benny then, some skank comes up to him and offered um, Benny a free dance. Now, Benny, let me help you understand something, Benny. You got to be the dumbest bastard on earth. And we've already deduced that you are in that... Um, you ain't far from it. You may not be the dumbest, but you ain't far from it. Because every guy knows there are a couple rules at the strip club. You One, you're not touching the strippers. Two, you damn sure ain't getting no um, private dance for free. Bitch, you ain't even getting no lap dance for free. Much less a private dance in a private room for free. They don't allow that mess. <coughs> and, and for you to fall for it, you got to be the dumbest bitch on earth. Hashtag Debo. Hashtag Debo. <laughs> anyway, Rocky and the other dude from the hotel, they meet up. Child, I don't know what they was talking about. I, I really didn't care. That, I don't know why they keep showing us that. Maybe it'll make sense later on, but whatever. I'll catch up on um, with that part when they do the whole... Um, previously on the haves and the have nots, they'll tell us what they talking about and when that's important. Cause right now I don't know and don't care. Charles and the skank, um, end up doing the do. She get her shape beat in, get her box blown out. And then Charles, um, uh, she says that Charles was calling out Candace's name and he was having angry sex with her. And she goes into this whole thing about how he needs to work his magic just to, um, get back with Candace and get Candace, um, to where she can, he can be with her. Cause she can tell that apparently, um, she could tell that he likes Candace, child, whatever. That shit don't even sound right, but child ain't nowhere in the world. You're going to tell me we just got through fucking, but then I'm going to tell you to go and get with some other chick. Whatever. At the script club, the scripper that Benny is in a private room with, she um has this drink for Benny and well I think Benny had to drink it there. She took a drink out of it and was hugging him and had to be Y'all see how my disrespectful ass central heating does every time? I ain't even got it in me to um turn it off. We almost done anyway. Um, 
grip a chick puts drugs, roofies, or some kind of drug to probably, you know, make him go to sleep in his drink. And he, you know, he drinks it. She rubs all on him, you know, dances all on him, grinds all on him, and that mess. And he drinks it. Then we go back to Landon's place. Um, Rooster Hair goes over there and tells him all about the drama going on back in Savannah with the cries and Harrington. Well, he doesn't tell him all about it. He tells him that it's some drama going on with the cries and the Harringtons back in Savannah, Georgia, because they're in Detroit. Landon calls Jeffrey to see what's going on with Jeffrey and to make sure he okay and the flirt. Child. He just trying to, child. You know Landon. Landon don't give up that easy. He's trying to make sure Jeff is okay and trying to flirt and trying to make sure that peen is still intact over there and that body that Jeffrey got. Y'all know Jeffrey is a whole ass snack over there. Y'all remember from what season was that? Season one or two? I think that was season two. When he came out that good shower with all that water glistening off his body. Ooh, chat. Derek then goes over to Veronica's house. She wants him to get the, as much information as he can about the guy who who she paid to plant the bomb in um, David's car. Uh, because that guy pretty much has turned state's evidence and is uh, willing to testify against Veronica. So she wants as much information as she has because apparently Derek is the one who hooked Veronica up with him. And so she's making Derek do... Y'all know how Veronica do. Y'all know what she gives. I mean, y'all know the men that she worked with is stupid enough to deal with her and her brand of fuck shit. So then, at the end of the episode, Benny um, is because I forgot to mention that at some point, Candace went to this um, strip club to go find Benny because she had been on the phone with um, with Hannah after Hannah kept saying, "Go find Benny, go find Benny." So she goes to the strip club to go find Benny. She ain't seen Mitch yet. Mitch goes to the, uh, Mitch talked to some scripper. And the scripper, and tell the scripper all about how Benny got this free dance. And the scripper was like, we'll do free dances here. And everybody knows that. Mitch, you should know that. Y'all just, uh, you gotta do better writing than this, Tyler. I mean, Tyler, you ain't shit. Bitch, you ain't shit, Tyler. Because you truly think that we are just stupid as fuck. Whatever. Mitch goes in there to check on Benny. Of course, Benny is not there. He gone. They done snatched him up. Hopefully, we'll have a whole nother season. Remember, Benny was in the hospital bed for a whole season. Is this going to be a whole nother season where Benny is, um, you know, lost and found again? Child, whatever. That was the Have and Have Not Season 7, Episode 3. Let me know what y'all think. I guess we'll be back next week for more of the fuck shit and fuckery. Until then, y'all, thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely.